we love you and we're glad to hear you preach this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We pray that at this time, Lord, you would remove distractions from our mind, that you would allow us to be able to focus on you and on the preaching of your word. We're uh, appreciative for Pastor Jay and him preaching this morning. And I pray, God, that you would please fill him with the Holy Spirit, give him the words to say, and may we cling to your word this morning. And may you speak with, to us. And may we worship you in spirit and in truth. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's see. I would like to ask you to uh, turn in your Bibles to Philippians 1 6. And I'll catch up to you. And I want to pray as well. Heavenly Father, we come to you and uh, thinking so much, uh, Heavenly Father, of the importance uh, uh, for not being up here a while to preach, of preaching, uh, of these people, Heavenly Father. The first thing I pour out is praise you for my son, um, Pastor Jack, and I love him very much, and I pray you continue to empower him in the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Lord, I thank you for a people that as you always gave me as well, that love their pastor and serve them. And uh, I believe you're there. I should speak to me. Thank you, sir. Um, what causes it to fall, or might it fall again? I don't think so. I think it's it's tilting back now. So if I keep my hands back and off it, <laughs> and just pound this pulp in there, <laughs> just to get the adrenaline out of me, this feeling. And uh, thank you very much, Jason. Um, I love you all, as I've said. And, uh, I love and rejoice the way the Lord is using my sons and daughters uh, here in this place as they did all life and now in other places as well. Okay, I'm gonna call on uh, uh, a few of you uh, and that's kind of what I, why I wanted to pray so long. I wanted to get out all of my heart, uh, your needs set before the Lord as well as mine, because we're here for him. Amen. Amen. When He, the Holy Spirit came like uh, cloven tongues of fires upon the head of the disciples in the book of Acts, um, uh, God moves and he moves in seasons. He moves in uh, times. And uh, we need to be ready and recognize and uh, be a part. And then when times are dry, as 400 years before Jesus came as a babe, the Father, the Lord did not give revelations or new speakings or books. Uh, God knows what he's doing. So if you pray for me, I'll start with Philippians 1.6. The Bible says, being confident, <clears throat> praise the Lord, of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you. Uh, first of all, let me say that. I've got a story to tell you about the precious couple that have gone through great loss. And I want to share that and uh, hope that the Lord moves our hearts and we could pray for them. But um, God is always good. Amen. Amen. The Puritans happen to be one of those recorded in history that excelled in telling their children uh, when a hurricane comes or a total devastation comes to your life, your family, whatever, 
Uh, God is always good. Amen. I, I rejoice to hear Texans and see him on the news when things come and crush down. They say, we thank God that he spared our life. What am I going to give him today? I had a sermon, but I thought, ah. He said, I'm with you. Amen. And one Joshua 1.9, 1, I think, says, and whithersoever you go, the Lord thy God is with thee, the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Thank you, sir. Ah, so my, you know, my age, all I need is that first couple of words, and it's like, there it is, it's in there. <laughs> all right, I delayed now. Let's have that verse on preaching. Yes, sir. Scripture can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For Christ sent me to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest Amen. the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Best pre the best and most intelligent geniuses there have ever been has never had anything as powerful as that. So whether people are going to be out of town or in and out, whoever's able to be here will be here and be praying for the Lord to give us a good time. And with that, I'll just say you all are dismissed and God bless you. Christ 
And as Jason said, this does feel fun to be in here tonight, and I pray that everyone will receive a blessing. <coughs> what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and have communion. And if you'd like to, you can be thinking about if anyone wanted to share a brief testimony tonight, something you're thankful for that God has done for you recently, then you can share something here in a little bit. If not, then that's perfectly fine. We've taught extensively on the Lord's Supper throughout the year, but very basically tonight, I'll just read the one passage where Jesus instituted it, and then we'll pass out the juice and the bread, and everyone is welcome to partake in it. We just teach that the Bible recommends that the Lord's Supper is given for those who are born-again Christians, and also that we should approach the Lord's table not frivolously, but with the seriousness it deserves, for God warned the church at Corinth that as they disrespected the Lord's Supper and approached approached it more as a party than a holy time to remember the Lord. He judged some among them. So we remind ourselves of that every time that we take it. But the very basic teaching and tenet is that it was given to be a remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ, that every time we partake, we would remember his body, we would remember his blood, be grateful that he died for us and for our sins, and look forward to the day that we will see him again in heaven soon. opportunity if anyone tonight wanted to give a quick word of praise I think last year we just had some people saying I got out of debt this year the Lord answered this prayer request for me but I just want to say I'm grateful for each and every one of you I'm thankful for you and for what the Lord has done in our church this year I know it's the nature of church work but has almost sort of surprised me even myself since starting just in the last two years how it's always a fact of church life that people come in and people come out and then you wish you could, you know, people come in and then by the time you get more new people coming in, it's always rotating. But I'm just grateful for the new ones that God has brought along this year. And for those of you who have been coming for decades and for years, I don't take for granted the fact that the Lord has blessed us with the church, with people to come and to praise the Lord and to be able to hear from him. So I'm grateful for each and every one of you. And I wanted to share a prayer request and a praise for my mother that I think a couple of y'all were here last Wednesday night and heard, but several of you were out and did not hear. Okay, I lived there more than I was at home, but I can honestly tell you that it took until this time in my life to really feel connected and um i like i said i just love coming here and listening to you preach like i said i found this out on facebook was it that i when i was in wisconsin kind of looking to see where we might go and all i had to do is i i heard one service and that was it this i Josh said he came to visit for me and he said, this is your church, mom. Huh. I mean, it definitely huh. is. And then I, I have to also say how humbling and precious that service was that your father gave. I, I just cannot believe it. In fact, I've already got two other people that are going to listen to it. Um, just, I don't know, it just hit me really hard. It was very hard to keep the tears back. But how humbling and just how wonderful. It was a great service. 
Amen. Yes, it was amazing. Amen. Absolutely amazing. And like Cam, we were talking the other day. I think about a month or two after I had started, they were probably about the first ones. And then in the month of May, three months in to when I started as Pastor Joe and Christina and their family came in. And I don't know when it was, but it was right around there that we met Dale and Pam as well. And we love you, Dad. He's got a great personality and good character. And uh, we're just grateful for, for him. And for all of you, and now I'm just stumbling, repeating myself, does anyone else have something they would like to share briefly tonight? I would like to say I remember our first email exchange. Yes. And I, asked, <laughs> I asked you if there were lasers in fog machines here, and you said no. <laughs> and I said, I don't need it. <laughs> I remember that as well. It's so funny you tell that. Uh, this is just kind of a family service here tonight. We're just kind of sharing very casual and informal, but uh, I hadn't yet set up the new church website and I hadn't yet set up the new email address. So my mom had an old email address that she logged into and checked every now and then for the church and she forwarded me your email. And I remember telling her, you know, I've met people before there's other like churches around here that they just like want to find out what your music is like. And I said, I don't even know if this is a real person or not, or if he's just doing this for some database or something. And then we emailed <laughs> back and forth a couple different times. And I think I reached back out to you and then you came around the Easter time service or whatever. So I remember that as well. And you're an answer to prayer. All of you are here tonight. I remember I was playing in a rock band and I didn't want a rock band in church. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't know where Jason I don't know where Jason and Karen are, but thank you to them for doing the music as well. That was beautiful tonight. I love that song, Oh Holy Night. Little details and things that have happened through the year and things that'll happen and seem like it's a disappointment or a, a barricade or trial and it just to be able to see God's hand working in things and for things like that to turn into so much good that I hadn't been able to see. Um and I'm just, I'm really thankful for this church too and for the church family. Um, I think I know, a lot of you know that I uh, got laid off a few months ago. I, praise the Lord, I have three job interviews this week, so um, I should be getting a job soon. But I won't mention the name, but I had a, a gentleman in the church come to me after he heard that I got laid off. And uh, he was concerned about me and offered me money for gas, which... Praise the Lord, I didn't even come close to needing that. But it just really touched my heart that to have a church family that looks out for you and prays for you and that support is. I just want to say I love you all and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. I consider you my family and I'm so blessed to know that each one of you like hearing that every single person is here tonight and whoever comes on Sunday is just And I was saved on Christmas Day and, um, as a young child, and I, to me, it's just the best day of the year. And pleasure to celebrate the Savior with each one of you this year. Amen. Up every day, uh, making the best of it. So praise Amen. God. Amen. When we think about Christmas and whatever we could do or gifts we could give or receive just to be able to give to the Lord and our families that right perspective to realize how blessed that we are to drink it in and be appreciative of the good things he gives us because life is certainly not easy. But to have the health, to work a job, to be able to have a family, whatever we have or don't have, we need to look to our Heavenly Father and tell him thank you for what he has given us. And Joe, you're a good man. I'm glad we met you and you're part of this church. We got Damn. to go to a men's trip this year with me, Jason, and Joe to go hear some preaching and some teaching about church work. And that was a wonderful time. We certainly enjoyed it. And as Ronnie said one time, we love Joe. We love his family. <laughs> we certainly love all his cooking that he's done for us. Amen. That's another thing to give praise to the Lord for this year. Amen. 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 As long as y'all want or as short as y'all want. Anybody? Or uh, when we joined up with this church, that there was a, a database that was able to locate your church and to find a, find churches, local churches that are Bible-based and solely believe in the doctrine and not their their own opinions or other opinions that have been expressed by other people. Um, I'm grateful for the church itself, for all the members here. Um, I speak for our family in saying that we love you and we appreciate everything that you all do for us in this church. Uh, thank you for bringing us into your home, being able to spend time with each and every one of you, uh, whether it be through um, Wednesday church.
for service or Sunday and um, all the different gatherings that we have. And thank you. Um, the Lord has really blessed me and my family this year. And, um, hope He continues to bless all of us in this church in this next year. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for leading your family to be so faithful for bringing our parents in. And uh, we love you, your wife. We have called her baby Lily at home because we differentiate from the cousin Lily. So I don't know how long that'll stick. She's growing up fast, but we certainly love baby Lily. Lily. <laughs> She's precious. And uh, even Gabriel really loved her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bye, weekend. Looking around, anybody else? Let's have a word of prayer first. Father, thank you for this opportunity to praise you from our hearts, Lord, just to hear these words from my brothers and sisters in Christ. I feel like has lifted my spirits here tonight, and I'm just so grateful for Christmas, for this season. Lord, as we look briefly now at the story of the wise men and how they came to seek Jesus Christ, I pray that we could apply these words and these truths to our heart and that we would be wise men and wise women who seek you as read Matthew chapter 2 verse number 1 through 18 the word of God says now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king behold there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying where is he that is born king of the Jews for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. And I'll just pause briefly to say that Micah chapter 5 was written over 500 years before Christ was born in Bethlehem. But the promise was given that though Bethlehem was little, it was not the least because out of Bethlehem, Christ would be born. Micah said, though Bethlehem is little, out of thee shall come he whose goings have been from everlasting. It was a prophecy of exactly where the Messiah would be born. And it's a reminder that Christ has always existed in heaven as God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made by Him, John chapter 1 says. And we believe that during this time of year, we are not just celebrating traditions or things that are fun. We believe that the Old Testament prophecies from Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, and Micah chapter 5 have given proof that the Bible is the Word of God that this is a supernatural book and the stories and the promises that are contained therein are real and why we have decided to make a big deal of Christ being born in the manger is because we believe he's God and that he said, I am the only way to heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we believe, we fear, we call upon his name for salvation and we admonish everyone around us. Still a baby, but not the night of his birth, that they came to the house and found him because they had diligently sought him. They worshiped him and then presented to him their treasures. A few thoughts. First of all, the treasures of the wise men. The Bible says in Matthew 2, 11, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. They did not come to find this child primarily to ask him for something. They didn't come because they were seeking to be entertained or to have a good time. Rather, they went on a great journey at great personal cost to themselves against the threat of a king that would surely kill them if he had the opportunity to. And they came to find Jesus because they believed he was the Messiah. And when they had found him, they worshiped him because they knew who he was. 
And yes, the Bible teaches us we ought to pray. And I believe that as we seek to live a godly life, God wants to bless you. He wants to answer your prayers. But our primary motivator is not to go to Christ for what we can get. Because yes, he will bless us. But maybe he'll call us to suffer persecution. Maybe he'll call us to poverty. Maybe he'll call us like these wise men to travel and leave our home and go through something that we don't really want to go through. And the primary reason that you should be seeking Jesus Christ at this Christmas season is not to be entertained, not because of what you can get from him, but to worship him. They exchange gifts at Christmas time, but it is all without true meaning if you have not believed the gospel and received God's unspeakable gift, the gift of salvation that he freely gives through Jesus Christ, his son. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. This is our treasure. Though we are the vessels, the word vessel likened unto a piece of pottery that is empty, that is, that is made out of what comes from the earth, it's temporary. Our treasure that we possess within ourselves is that the excellency of the power to live the Christian life does not come from within us, but it comes from our God. It comes from our Savior. <laughs> to consider the treasures of the wise men and the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Christ without truly knowing the power of the gospel and salvation in Christ is life's greatest loss. Receive them by faith as your Savior, and you will have this treasure in you. And truly, the real treasures of Christmas are found in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember throughout this week and on Sunday to worship him, be grateful for him, praise him, commit to live your life according to his word. And if there's anyone here tonight who has not received Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, if you have not gone to Christ and believed and said, I want you to be my salvation, I trust not in my good works, my baptism, my church membership, but only in Christ and his shed blood on the cross of Christ and say, God, will you save me? Will you be my Savior? He has promised he will do it. And that is the greatest treasure of all. At this point, if I could have... Let me see, would Fabian and Andrew be willing to come help me? And Jason, if you would stand by, what we'll do at this point is we're gonna light the candles and as they come by, they'll pass out the candles and at least light one and you could help the people on your row to light a candle and you can look around and sort of see how the room's dark. But as we light the candles, the light grows and that's a picture of how our light, if we will let it shine for the Lord Jesus Christ, then our light will continue to grow. Though the world is dark, all it takes is one person with the light to send it to one other person. Chapter 5, ye are the light of the world. 
A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. All right, I'm going to see how well I remember the words for this little light of mine. So if I forget it, you just keep on going. Right? Let's see. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thing under the bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hiding under the bushel, no. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. 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 Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly and be dismissed in a word of prayer. And Rebecca, would you maybe collect something like a, a trash can or something to help get everybody that as we dismiss, you could blow your candle out and then give it to Rebecca as you go out. She'll be there in the back. And then maybe after we conclude the prayer, Andrew, if you could just flip one of the lights on. <laughs> oh yeah, that was quick. <laughs> okay. Okay, Karen. Hope to see you next Sunday, okay? Next Sunday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you.